Serving Tampa Bay since 1954, the Heritage Station, WTMP, Egypt Lake, Tampa, Clearwater, 97.5 in Pinellas. as hell out there. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I, I saw the, the traffic and everybody's going to the beaches and the spring break and they, they didn't get me like they did a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago I was unaware. But uh, today I was aware. So I, so I know what the traffic was. I, I know where everybody was trying to go. And I know where they, what, what was going on. So You are ready. Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, it's that time again. We're going to do our thing here. Uh, I got to tell you, I got a lot of good calls from last week. Matter of fact, one of the callers was a 60-year-old white female from Chicago who was a Democrat. So we got all kind of people who listen to and, and, and likes this show. I mean, you know, we, we have... Uh, a lot of white folks, a lot of black folks. You know, Hispanics out there too. You know, Hispanics. And you know, this and it's called Post Talk Radio for a reason. And the reason we, we, we do it is because the conversations that tend to raise not only the character, but the intellectual quote quotient of the community as a whole. And you know, so we got you know, we got white folks that say well, I didn't know that. We got black folks that say, well, I didn't know that. And, it's the uh, same thing. You, you know, well, that's why we do it. We do it so next time you can you can say, I knew that. <laughs> you know, so, and, and, and you have to hear it a couple of times. You know, sometimes it don't stick. Uh, you know, some of the topics we talk about are not pleasant. But that don't mean we can't do it. We don't inform everybody and keep everything going. So so I got to make sure that folks understand that this week has been an unusual week for me because I got a message from my sister and, and my niece takes care of my mom. So my niece has been taking care of my mom for like 10 years and she has dementia. We used to, uh, she was at Brandywine, which is like a, a LA, uh, you know, a, 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 sister living place. Sister living. And uh, and she often she's always used to have injuries, mm. you know. She fell and hurt this, or she broke that, uh, you know. And, and folks never knew how she kept getting hurt. So my niece started taking care of my mom in her home, you know, about ten years ago. And the only reason my mom is alive, and I'm, and and I and I can say that, is because my niece had taking great care of her. That's excellent. You know, so having somebody love you when you are incapacitated, you mm -hmm. might say, because dementia is one of them kind of diseases. <clears throat> you know, dementia is you can be perfectly healthy, but your mind is still bad. And you can't be let out to roam. You know, and, and, and so that's and so that's primarily what it's about. And uh, and as I say, we had a lady who called. Uh, well, she, she emailed me. Uh, again, we get a lot of different type of, of followers who listen to the show. Some people just happen to hear us, you know, while they're thumbing through on the weekend. And uh, some people are actually uh, regular listeners. So the regular listeners, we thank you guys for listening to uh, me and Gabriel every weekend as we, as we do God bless our, you. As we do our thing, help you. thing here. <laughs> and we know some of you guys understand, but some of you don't. And some of you don't give a crap. <laughs> so, so, Here we go. So we got a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get the show started. The, the show, if you want to call in during the show, the call in number is 813-251-9867. 813-251-9867. If you want to call me after the show, and have a conversation. I mean, I, I talk to people all the time. 
uh, you know, or if you want to text, or if you want to just email, you know, if you want to call me after the show, uh, give me a call, 813-12. That's Eddie Adams Jr.'s cell phone number. So, text, email, whatever you want to do. I'm out there. And, 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 and it's good because I know you will. Because, you know, I got, as I, as I was saying, you know, part of the conversation last week was uh, was on reparations. Mm-hmm. And the old 40 acres and the mule concept. And a lot of white folks, a lot of black folks, didn't understand where it come from, how it came about. And literally, they have been miseducated about the whole effing thing. And it actually was a great idea, and it really would have worked. Unfortunately, politics got in the way of it. But it really, I mean, compared to nothing, obviously, well, okay, that, that's good. But it really was a good idea that actually had temporarily off the ground. And, and this for black folks. You know, our folks do not know, do not understand that 20 black religious figures met came up with the idea and presented the idea to William Sherman, General Sherman, mm-hmm. who had pretty much kicked all the, you know, Confederate booty uh, in his march to the ocean, you know, uh, and, and cut a path through the South, uh, whipping every butt in sight. And at the end of the day, you know, he went and said, you know, what do you recommend? This is what he did. To he went the, to the people. He went to the he went to the twenty to the black, black people, leaders. Yo. The black leaders were saying, "What should we do?" And, and and the whole concept and idea, and it wasn't forty acres and a mule for free. See mm-hmm. that's that's a part. And that's another one, Eddie. That's, that's a, part a big that one. A lot of folks, you know, misunderstood. You know, when they started talking about twenty acres and a you know forty acres and a mule and and and, and getting something for free. Now these people have been enslaved for four hundred some years. They have been working for free for 400 and something years. And, and they didn't say, well, give us this or give us something. See, that's, see that, that's, that's America. See, that's America, America messing with you. You know, because let me, let, me, let, me, let me run this by you. Let, let, me, let me take your temperature today. How in the hell do you work? For somebody for 400 freaking years for free, and they say you lazy. Ah, lazy, shiftless. How in the hell? <laughs> Back then, Eddie, I don't see how it was possible. Because if you didn't how, work, you didn't how, eat. How, how do you work for free? Yeah. Now, now I can understand, you know, the, you know, a lot of folks, you know, got a lot of bounce in their step, and, a, and, 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 and I, I'm gonna tell you, I just envision all those movies, you know, thousands of years ago when they were building on pyramids, and, and working on all kind of stuff, and they had the, the, the crack in the whip, and you know, now them wasn't black folks, back in them, you know, some of the people was Egyptians, mm-hmm. you know, some of the people were. You know, was was uh, but there was, Jew, a, there was Jewish, black people in there too. You know, now. some. But you're right. You know, they actually got you know his. They got you know uh, Chinese and mm-hmm. and, That's right. and and That's right. Japanese. I mean, every point on this planet at some point in time was enslaved. Has slaves. Yeah. We we ain't the first, and we weren't gonna be the last. Mm-hmm. But for somehow, when they start talking about shuffling and and shiving and and lazy you know the first photo that comes to everybody's mind is, is black black men and black women wrong because whenever it was all said and done and and solutions were offered even though the United States of America, whose economic viability has skipped 
other continents by generations of having free labor. And, and you don't get that back. I know a lot of folks talking about, well, we don't owe them nothing. We ever said you owed us any damn thing. And I'm going to say it like that. Any damn thing. Eddie, you're right on the money because people, uh, and I'm going to say stereotype, saying, well, back to what you originally said about the, the shifty and the lazy and all that. Uh, back in the day, if you didn't work, you didn't eat uh, back then. And today, a little change. Some of it's changed. But still, the fact that uh, there's nothing being, there's no handouts being asked. It's like, yo, how about you just make right what happened initially? That's all you're asking. How about just make right? what happened initially, as opposed to give us, give us, give us. Now, there's some of that mixed in today in politics, but how about just give us what we owe? But they don't understand that. That's, you're right, See, Eddie. so you can't... Um, uh, look at the Rockefellers. Oh, my goodness. You know, look at the Vanderbilts. You look at the Kennedys. Look at all the rich folks you know of today. All the families that have had money since their great, 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 great great granddaddy mm -hmm. owned slaves how do you distribute how do you redistribute all that wealth you, you can't but you know you know first thing people would say well well you know uh when they gathered it you know they they, they made good decisions they did this and did that i'm gonna tell you people free labor is the bomb it's the bomb diggity I'm telling you that if you ain't never heard it before, I'm telling you right now. Free labor. Give give anybody, give any country, I don't care how smart their leadership is or not, 400 years of free labor. It's kind of hard to screw that up. I'm just telling you. I'm just I'm just saying. You know, you know, you know, a lot of white folks, you know, saying to themselves, you know, well, we want some, you know, we didn't benefit. If you are alive in America today and you are white, I'm telling you, we, we don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not biting my lip. I'm not biting my tongue. If you are free in America today and you white, you are benefiting from the labor of black folks. Period. I don't give a crap where you from. I don't care if you say, well, we were, we were from the north. You Those act, are the worst. You act like they didn't, they didn't wear clothes in the north. Yeah, they don't. They, they they didn't do cotton, and they didn't do sugar. Did they eat up there? You know, and they, be and that they, they, they didn't do strawberries and oranges and 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 every other kind of you know wheat, grain, corn. I mean, all tobacco. Mm -hmm. All that stuff was farmed for free. Uh, oh, oh, I, I forgot. You know, and I I, I guess, guess I guess I went. Sour too quickly. Mm -hmm. They 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 provided room and board. That's right. You place, did, we had a, somebody a, call a, that a place to stay and eat. They were privileged in that, right, Eddie? You know, a couple of couple of uh, scars on your back if you didn't move quick enough. Of 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 you didn't you didn't do something that you was told to do. And and I gotta make this statement even though I know a lot of people may not understand what it means, but black folks were not people back then. Mm -hmm. You're right. You were chattel. Hmm? What? <laughs> chattel. You wasn't even cattle. You was called chattel, which means you were livestock. Really? They had a market in which you were bought and sold. Not only were you bought and sold, so were your kids. So was your siblings. So was your parents. And you had a value on you. And they could do anything to you. And and I and I and I get, you know, a lot of folks you know, don't understand what all that means mm -hmm. nowadays looking back at it. You you had a good life. 
Yeah, yeah. Slavery, slavery was good because a lot of young folks really ab absolutely don't understand, and it was never taught in school. Mm -hmm. You're right. And we was having this conversation about corporal punishment last week, mm -hmm. and I had a a sixty-year-old white female from Chicago who said she went to Catholic school. And she said, them nuns tore their butt up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that and the ruler. Yeah. Some, nuns, hands she, up. she said, some of them nuns were vicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but you know, the point that, that, that I'm trying to make, or the, the, the issues that, that I'm dealing with here, is, you know, there's a point in time where this entire country, old, its existence, to the profits and the economics that it was engendered, it was it was being favored by the hardship of black folks in this country. And, and I'm and I'm telling you something else that you didn't even you know what would make it you know more more down to earth was you know there was a point in time where you didn't even pick your mate. Mm -hmm. They had a old big old black strong brother up in the shed with no air conditioning and his job all day was to be the big bull literally mate that's what he did and and and, and farmers slave owners from all over the south would send women for the same thing like they used to do cows and horses and pigs and all that kind of stuff. All right, we got a caller. Caller, welcome to uh, Porch Talk Radio on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of you know got off on this thing, you know, but but it's important you know that folks understand, you know, because I because I, I hear all the time, oh, oh, I don't owe nothing. Oh, my my daddy didn't this and my mama didn't that. I'm, I'm giving you, I'm telling you right, right down now. If you are American, if you was in this country, and if you've been here for the last 600 years, you owe something to black folk. Welcome to Porch Talk Radio on this Saturday afternoon. Who are you, where you calling from, and what say you? Hello. Tim in Tampa, um, I understand what you're saying. Uh, before I get to the serious stuff about the picking our mates, uh, that might have been a good idea because none of us seem to be able to pick the right one. But on a serious note, what do you think would be uh, the right compensation. Are we doing this per family or per individual, uh, African American? How? Um, I like to call. I like. I like Black American myself. I'm white, but I think that's more respectful because Black folks are, are Americans. I don't like the African part, but uh, you know that's an individual thing. But what do you think would be a just compensation, or does it vary on circumstances? My my problem with trying to figure this thing out now is, and if you heard it a couple of weeks ago when I was explaining, you know, the forty acres and the mule thing was, yeah, you, you know, those folks were freely, newly freed slaves. They were, you knew who they were, you knew where they were, and you knew you said, okay, I can compensate you. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna give you a certain value of land, mm -hmm. and 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 we're gonna give you the opportunity to to make something not only of yourself but of the land, and to help your family and generations to come. See, the problems now is you got four, five, six generations mm -hmm. of family that have been completely disconnected, yeah. and so now you got the built-in problem of, of folks who have resentment even even though they may owe black folks something you know determining the amount and determining you know who gets it and who mm -hmm. don't get mm -hmm. it and all that stuff that's a bigger problem and a bigger detriment and it makes it almost impossible mm -hmm. and I'm saying it you know you know for 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 black folks to be Hell, we've been untreated and, and not not been fairly treated for a long time. But 
to come up with a plan that will give folks the opportunity to say, okay, well, we non compensated you, shut the hell up. You know, that may be a bigger issue than, than trying to figure out what the value of it is. The black community does have a very high percentage of government benefits going to them versus white people already. I mean, you realize that, right? No, 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 no that's no. Incorrect. incorrect. Let, let me let me tell you something that you may or may not know. White folks, white folks get more welfare in this country than black folks do. Because it, the percentage it, higher, it, white it may, folks. It, black may, folks. it may hurt people feeling. You know, yeah. to know that, you know, because all the welfare story and all the welfare queens and, oh, yeah. and all the shock and all the, the, the corruption has been said to be in the black community. But white folks get more welfare checks than black folks do. Sorry. It's a population thing. <laughs> okay. I have a question, I, and I don't want you to get mad at me. I just, I, just want, I, want, I just want what you think. Yes. Do you think young black men today in 2021 do try to avoid hard work and physical work. I'm, I'm just asking you. Do you think that's Ouch. a problem now that they're trying to avoid work? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You know, we that don't make us smarter or dumber than anybody else because I know an awful lot of rich white snowflakes sitting on their ass at home right now, you know, complaining, you know, and they got everything. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? So there's, I, Eddie, I want to say that there's there's groups in all, it doesn't matter what the color or race is, Hispanics, we got our, our boatload out there, the same thing, not making a joke on the boat thing, but just well, in general. What we all been talking about here is really nonsense, so really, we need to figure out a plan. Let's, let's start talking about a plan. What can we do to get this thing squared away, you know? That's, that's the thing, and put it behind us. And I think the Indians, you know, are first in line and then go from there but you know let's get a plan and get it activated uh why biden's in there and you know if we get a good enough plan he may pull the trigger on it you know he might write the checks who knows he's got he's got a point Eddie. well well, well let, let, okay since we're having a conversation and and you appear to be somewhat of a normal actual actual reasonable thinking white man um and i didn't go through all that to 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 make a bad point I'm going through that to say part of what I am trying to do is create this dialogue and make sure that people understand that the conversation isn't what a lot of Americans think it needs to be. You know, because, because shiftless, black, non working, lazy, black teenager. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. No, I stop saying that because a lot of the black teenagers now, because of the music and stuff, they are shifty and they are trying to avoid physical work because in the construction business, I've seen it over and over and over. But do you think, let me put it this way, do you think giving money to people would be better or maybe more programs or how we, how are we going to solve this thing? How, you know, and young white people are getting lazy too. I mean, it's, it's just all, a, all colors. It's just Get, a getting, culture of lazy. Get, getting, getting lazy is, is something you say. My, my, my problem with, with the whole concept is is that it, it don't have a color. It really, it really don't have a color. It's really, because if you go to any country in the world other than the United States of America and look at the young people. Yeah, same thing. Same. You know, they, they, they are vibrant. They're, they're, they're working. They, you know, they have no choice. They, 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 they go to work at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, and they come home, they go to school, they do the homework, do whatever they do. You know, and, and I'm a world traveler, so I've seen this. You know, without having the racial face that that Americans tend to put on all our issues and all our problems, so I'm, I'm thinking the solution to this is gonna be the intelligent conversation mm -hmm. of how we create opportunities for everybody who lives in this country. Eddie, you're saying opportunities, not handouts. Not handouts, uh, opportunities. You know, because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. You know, uh, uh, Eddie, when I was in Israel uh, maybe four or five years ago, I mean, the young people were like completely different. They were excited to be like getting into the workplace yes. and all that kind of stuff. Right. They just didn't get zeal. I think, and this goes against what you're saying, kind of, but maybe we're giving too much to all young people. Let's forget about race. Let's just stop talking about, let's talk about young people, because that's really the issue, you know? If we, if we make them just work hard, there ain't no app for hard work. You can't, 
you press a button and do your radio show. You got to put work and effort into it. Right. And the thing is, American kids don't seem to get excited about that. In Israel, you tell a kid, hey, you know, I need someone to help me build this house. Wow. Okay. What kind of house, man? And you know, what kind? What? What? what, 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 what you know what I mean? Uh, sitting on the couch is overrated. Look at what you're doing, man. You guys are out here on a Saturday morning, pounding the pavement on this radio show and getting it done week after week, and it's appreciated. Even if you don't get a thousand callers, believe me, there's people, lots of people listening, and we appreciate it. But how do we transfer that to the young people? Of hey, when you work, there's a reward and it's satisfying to you. Give it a try. You like it? Well, I, well, I think America is the greatest country on the planet and I have traveled. I, I, I have been all over this planet and I've seen a lot of different kinds of people. That's, that's why when I hear conversations you know about you know black folks being this and black folks being that you know it upsets me because a lot of people say it but they, they don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. They, they, right, don't, right, they right. don't know what it entails and, and most of it is, is a lie. That, that's been produced by the media. The media is a great instrument. The media is a great machine. Everybody talk about propaganda being produced by the Russians and the Chinese and all. We America, got plenty of our own. America do pretty darn good with the propaganda lie, lie stuff. Continuous. You know, 24-7. You know, ourselves. And when we pick a set of people to benefit from our great opportunities, it has been traditionally White folks, white white men. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can say that. You know, and and when they talk about glass ceilings, they never talk about the glass ceiling for white men. It's always the glass ceiling for white women. You know, you know, black women got the same ceiling. You know, and it's been there for much, uh, much, well, much longer. I'll, I'll take that to uh, Tyson, to I mean, hundreds of athletes, and the guy in their life, the man in their life, was a white guy. Yeah. He said, you know what? I'm going to work with this kid. Yeah. Well, 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 well see, the, see the, the difference is, and, and I'm going to tell you, and, and then I'm, then I got to let you go, but, but thank you for the call. Excellent call. The, the, the difference is physical attribute mm -hmm. is absolute. Either you can run faster, you can jump higher, you can throw something further. Mm -hmm. You know that that's that's the between basketball and football and hockey and all it's the different, be genetics. and I'm all the different that. sports. You know, is that if I you know it don't matter what my politics is, either I can beat you or I can't. Mm -hmm. If I put you put me in the ring with somebody and put some boxing gloves on both of us, you know, and say beat the hell out of that guy, one of us can do it and the other one can't. You see what I'm saying? So, so it don't matter how smart you are at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. it, it it goes down to a physical thing. So, so, so it's kind of like horse racing. You know, those young two year old horses can run like hell. Mm -hmm. You know, but all of them ain't gonna win the race. All of them no. ain't gonna be fast. Mm -hmm. All of all of them ain't gonna be great horse races. You know, running mm -hmm. horses. You know, that there's something that that different differentiates the two. Turn it up. You see what I'm saying? When you get home tonight, I want you to please listen to this. It's called Seeds of Greatness by T.D. Jakes. The Cause. Seeds of Greatness, The Cause. It's on YouTube. If you will listen to that, it's going to put everything we're talking about into place. And Thank you. I love the show. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. I want you to cool down a little bit and, and go to God with these things because something's really under your skin. I understand it. But, but we got, we've got to, like Rodney King says, we just all got to get along because these mass shootings and stuff. When is it Tampa? Tomorrow, the next day? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's something in the air and it's not right. And only you and I can change it by our interactions today that we have to people right now. You guys have a blessed day. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yes. And, and I'm, glad, I'm glad he called. He, he was a good caller. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm going to say something that's going to, Pretty much upset everybody else, but for, for some reason or another, you know, a couple of Asian folks got killed. Uh -huh. Okay, now, oh, Asian, Asian, I, I'm, 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 I am, I am telling you, people, they shoot, they shoot. My more black folks got killed in Chicago this weekend than all the Asians that's been 
murdered in America this year. Eddie, Eddie, come on out. Eddie, Eddie, uh, you're, you're saying, going off the rails here, Eddie, I'm because Chicago saying, has had I'm at least just... 75 shootings this month alone, black on black. The media is not concerned. The white liberal media is not concerned with black on black. This goes on in Chicago all the time. This is normal. You're right. Asians got killed. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. I mean, it, things happen. But the black on black crime and all that and shootings... The liberal media doesn't care about that. And, 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 that's, and, and that's my point. You and know, they ain't going to fix it, Eddie. When we're talking about reparations and, and black shiftless folks and, and, and how do you participate in a system that has predetermined that, you know, they, owe, they know they owe you, but what they're going to not do is not ever be fair with your compensation. Eddie, you're, you're talking about look, taking a step back and saying, okay, so... If it's true that black on black crime is not an issue, although they tend to kill each other more than white do blacks, but so do was white kill more whites and yeah, Asians yeah, yeah. kill more so, Asians. But, but you're saying, you but, but see, the media, the liberal media is not concerned, and if people stop to think, well, gee, where are all the abortion clinics? It's in the minority neighborhoods, where mainly black. So it's like Eddie, there's a system in place. I'm not a conspiracy nut here at this point, but I'm just saying. You don't have abortion clinics over in West Chase, over in, in Hollywood. You don't have those there. You got them in the black hoods you don't because have they abortion. didn't control that population. You don't have abortion clinics in the Asian communities. Ooh, how about that? And again, the, the white liberal media, they don't, they've written off the black people, Eddie. And right now with this current administration, Eddie, with letting all these illegals in, they're going to have to work somewhere. They're going to take somebody's job. That's amazing, Eddie. Well, and, and, and that's, that's the They're point. They've written off the black people, Eddie. You know, that's the point that I'm trying to make. You know, it, it is up for uh, people with a platform like this who are not tongue-tied. I am pretty much retired. Uh, you know, I, I get a Social Security check that I earn, work my butt off for a whole bunch of years, work, work for the state, work for the county, work for Tampa General, now, all that money comes in. I am no longer continually working for it, but 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 I but when I did, I did. You put it, in your time, right? So, you so, earned it, Eddie. So that's the nature. Not a handout. The nature of it is how many years? I'm sixty. I'm sixty-seven. How many years have you been working? Where are you working? I've been I've been working since I was eight. <laughs> Woo see, see, and that's the difference. And, and he was talking about how you do a work ethic. My mom had five kids. I'm the oldest of five kids. And on the weekend, she would find somebody who was going to the Orange Grove mm -hmm. and talk <clears throat> them into letting me get a five-gallon bucket, plastic bucket, and work with them all day, filling them buckets up with oranges. How many of your brothers and sisters got degrees? College. None. All of them, all of them got nursing. I got two nurses. But they all got college degrees, yeah. right? Nursing. All, Nursing all five of them. Junior okay. college. But all five of them. No, it's five of us. Two of them are dead. Okay. But all those <laughs> went all of them in school pretty much? No. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. telling you, I'm the, I was the first one and, and probably, you know, pretty much been the last okay. one. Okay. I, I have a master's degree, but that's because of me. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't because, you know, somebody laid it out there and say, oh, this is, well, this is the path you follow. It is not like that for an no. awful lot of black folks. It is no. not like that. If you don't have self-determination, <clears throat> self mm -hmm. if you don't Make have that. something in you that makes you get up in the morning and do what it is you do, you won't. it won't get done. But, Eddie, the call. But you don't have nothing to fall back on. You don't have a mama and a daddy that's worth millions of dollars and, and, and a comfortable air-conditioned you know, basement <laughs> that you can live in. And play you know, games. For, for the rest of your life, yeah, and, and do games. But, Eddie, how do you motivate the young people? That was one of the points in the call, is how do you get the young people motivated? Is community leaders pulling together and saying, hey, let's, we understand there's a lot of not fathers in the household. Is there something we can do to try and put, pull, help these kids out? I don't know, Eddie. I think that's a, that's a good question. But, but it, it is a good question, but the problem is... Maybe it, the churches should be involved. It's, it's cultural. Ah. It's cultural, because I'm going to tell you something. When I was a kid, they had to make us go inside. Nowadays, they have to make kids go outside. Mm -hmm, correct. You know, they spend all their time in there. We didn't have air conditioning box. I'm telling you. Really? I, I was a grown, I'm telling you, I was a grown ass man before I had an air conditioner. 
my whole childhood. The house my mom lived in, matter of fact, the house that I'm working on right now that belonged to my mom, it just got its first air conditioning. I put it in it. Mm. I am telling you right now, it's it 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 it, it's, it had it's one of those neighborhood jury jury done air units, but the the but the the, the light bill was five hundred dollars a month. Ooh. So that means it wasn't even done right. Mm. I just had a reasonable air conditioning unit put in my mama's house, and it's actually cool. <laughs> uh -huh. So so my whole childhood, you know, we didn't have nice air conditioned boxes, you know, to hang up in. We was outside playing. We was mm -hmm. outside doing stuff. You know, that's culture. When the opportunity came on the weekend for me to earn some money, you know, I went to the orange grove. I picked fruit. Matter of fact, all my friends, all my neighbors, everybody in my neighborhood picked fruit on the weekend. How many buckets do you think you picked? Hell, I don't know. I mean, I mean, see the good thing about, you know, that kind of labor, they pay you every day. Uh. So at the end of the day, whatever it was you, you, you earned, you got. You got paid. And so I could buy my own clothes, and I could buy my own food, and I could buy this, and I could, and I could help my mom out, being the oldest of, of five kids. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of stuff like that, that there is no, that there, there's nothing written in a book somewhere that's going to help you raise your kids. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. They're going to lead by example. You better, you better be a good example. Por Porch, I'm, Porch Talk Radio you know, and I'm telling you guys, it's a lot of good intentions out there because you can have five kids with the same mama, same daddy, raised in the same household, and two of them could be son of a, mm -hmm. SOBs. Yeah. Two of them could be SOBs. Got the same mama, same daddy, same gene, same everything. Mm -hmm. They could be drunks. They could be drug addicts. They could be pushers. You know, you know they, they could be uh, menace to societies. And two of them could be good, well-educated, upstanding, right, rightful citizens who run for stuff and yep. get elected to stuff and do good stuff. It, it is no right people. Well, you know, well, I did, I didn't. Well, you do, you do your best. Keep doing your best. At some point in time, that person will get it or they won't. Because age don't stop. You keep growing, and then one day it's done. Well, lady, I think nowadays people forget to be the parent, and they want to be their kid's friend. Yeah. And, and as I raise my two that are raising their families now, owning their own homes and businesses and all that, uh, you know, I had many a time they weren't happy with being the chores they had to do, and they were like, you know, we, we hate you. That's fine. You'll be hungry tomorrow. I'm not worried about it. And I went on. And the next day they were hungry. They were at the table right there ready to eat, and they were smiling. Ain't nobody in my house ever said, I hate you to my mama. Oh, and no, never she, to mama now. Yeah, she, she had five kids. She worked two jobs for all of us, and it didn't matter how mad we got at her. Ain't none of us, because the other four would have beat the hell out of them. Yeah, yeah. I hate you. What, what kind of sh I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Okay, we got a call. Call the whack on the Porch Talk Radio on this fine Saturday afternoon. Who are you, where are you calling from, and what say you? Hello? It is Charles Coffey. How you doing there? Hey, hey, Mr. Coffey. Look here, I, I, I agree with that. I, I come up the same way. You know, I, I, I'm only 65. You got me a couple of years. But 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 during the days when I was coming up here, that's right, integration, I still say, was a curse to black folks. We, yes, it was. We, we gave up our school. We gave them up. So your partner don't understand this, and I, re and I respect that for what he says. You know, and he has his right to say what he say. And, and but but he you got to understand black America and black culture. That's right. We was making it. We had our own businesses. That's right. Cities came in. If you look here, the uh, uh, the the police and all of the police they let dope come in the black community and destroy it. But they would let it go in the white community. But when white folks start coming in in the community getting dope, then they did a little bit about it. You got uh, you got to go back. Listen here. If black folk took the responsibility for all what they didn't do, listen here, you still would have to go back 200 years and, and, and look at this system and say, hey, this system wasn't even set up for us. The constitution of this country wasn't even set up for us. America is a good country. It's the best country we're going to ever be in. But listen here. 
it's been wrong towards black folk in a lot of ways. Eddie. Yes, it has been. Yes. Give me your comment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. And 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 like like Mr. Coffee, if if you went to the heart of the average black American, they gonna tell you a story, and not many white folks would believe it. I'm I'm just telling you because the nature of it is you gotta see it through the eyes you were born with, and see it through the eyes that you lived with, and see it through the eyes that have been rose colored for so many years and they have actually taught you how to look at America. Oh yeah. Twenty four seven now. And and what's good and what's bad. And they have indoctrinated you. And and I'm gonna tell you something real funny. Six six o'clock news, CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, whatever. The black guy who robbed the McDonald's restaurant, mm -hmm. you always hoping. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. He ain't black. Uh, I'm going to be not Hispanic. What are you talking about? He, he, he always hope, he, he ain't, he hoping he ain't black. It's some, some see, 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 Kay, Kay, Kay having, a, having a cow over there. She laughing. I'm just saying. Because when you hear the news story, it tells you pretty much that they're going to be black. And it, it pretty much tell you, you know, that that that, that person that that's doing the wrong over there, mm -hmm. and 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 gonna get shot 450 times, you know, when all the police run out of all the damn bullets. That's America, and that's how black folks in America get treated on the six o'clock news, and they do it every day. Okay, caller, we got we, thank thank you. We got another caller, caller, welcome to Push Talk Radio. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what call? And what say you? Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Gino. I'm calling from. I call in sometimes when I when I'm when I can pick y'all up. But this is this is what I, I think. When you have in America, you uh, we are separated. We have like right now. We have black politics. We have Republican and we have Democrat. When you have that separation, when it's only 30, 30 million of us. We're, we're never going to come together. We're never going to get this thing together because of that one thing only. Uh, like we talked about, we said reparations, and, and that we said that we wasn't going to work. Uh, uh, we didn't want to get the land for free. But get to realize, I can name you three times where they gave free land to Europeans in, in, uh, in America. And not only, uh, uh, not only that, we are big wishful thinkers. We think because we get our education, because we get money, just like Herschel Walker, that the white people are going to accept you, and that never happened. You don't know it's been happening today. I don't know it's been happening ever, and it's never going to happen. They're not going to accept you no matter what you do. So if we don't come together, we ain't going to never get anything. Yeah. And that's what I say. And I work just like you. I work in fields. I work in pain. Uh, tobacco, I would get it all. And I got two degrees from Florida State University. Two. Two. <laughs> now, I do well in my life, sure. But I just don't want to do well. I want to see a man down the street do well as a black man. Yes. So as long as we keep on with Democrats, at least we to get black and black, we ain't going to never do well. And we ain't going to never have uh, do the way we were back in the 50s, when we had this, when we had that. We may have had this. But that doctor could not the white man in his face back in the 1950s. You come look him in the face. You still have to get off the sidewalk with your doctor's degree. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Glad you called. All right. All right. Porch Talk Radio. <laughs> Live. We got to share gonna, and like. Porch Talk Radio. We're at it. We're going to do the on this day thing. Come on. Uh, you know, we got a couple of we had, had a couple of good calls. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, the point for the show, and this is some, you know, that that I want to make sure black folks understand, they cannot shame you into thinking somehow that every American. And I don't give a crap what color you are. 
whether you Asian, Hispanic, black, white, you owe an awful lot of 400 years of free labor in this damn country. Again, economically, it's a debt. Now, how you figure out how to pay it and what the intentions are and how many people going to be butthurt because they think you got something that you didn't deserve, mm -hmm. you know, even though people get stuff every day that they don't deserve, it's America. And I'm telling you something. Black America lived 400 years in slavery with black America and came out of it as some of the strongest people on this planet. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about Oprah, who's a billionaire. I'm telling you to go through what black Americans went through and come at it on this side is a miracle. And we can still jump higher, run faster, and throw a freaking ball further. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Big time. So, anyway, on this day, <laughs> Move along. On, on this day, uh, March the 27th, 1794, the U.S. Congress authorized the creation of the U.S. Navy. Hmm. So 1794, the U.S. Navy came into existence. Before then, they had volunteer ships, owners that would get together and, and go fight kind of like wars back before then. I'm just telling you, I mean, the Navy's old. Mm -hmm. Been around a while. Navy's been around a while. All right. Well, I know we got a caller. We're going to finish this. On this day, March the 27th, 1866, U.S. President Andrew Jackson mm -hmm. vetoed the U.S. Civil Rights Bill. He vetoed the U.S. Civil Rights Bill, which later became the 14th Amendment. On this day, March 27, 1912, the first strawberry blossom tree was planted in Washington, D.C. Hmm. I don't know how many of you people have ever been to Washington, D.C., but they got strawberry blossom trees everywhere. I've been there in the winter. And there was a gift. Cherry. Ch I'm sorry. I, I am so cherry. Cherry blossom trees. Oh. Cherry blossom trees. I, I said strawberry. It must, must have got plants in it on the brain. Cherry blossom trees. And they came as a gift from Japan. And last but not least, on this day, and a lot, of, a lot of you men are going to know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all may not give a crap. On this day, March the 27th, 1998, the U.S. FDA mm -hmm. authorized the prescription drug known as Viagra. It was the first pill for male importance. <laughs> but they discovered it doing something else, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It, Blood it was, pressure. Huh? It, it was an accident. Yeah. Impotence. That's that's what that's what I was saying. So anyway. that, well, Eddie, some days I feel impotent. Any, okay, let me, well, that's let, important. Okay, right. let's, let's get a call in, then, then we'll do your thing. Call the Whack on the Porch Talk Radio on this Saturday afternoon. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what say you? Hello? Caller. I guess you're excited about your thing there. Okay, they're not there. Hello, Eddie, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Thank you for calling. Hello? Okay, hi. This is Fred Hearn. Uh, right now I'm in Tampa. And uh, this has been one of your best shows, at least that I've heard uh, this year, Eddie. 
And I give a lot of credit to the caller that, that uh, you allowed a lot of time to speak because he made some really good points. And he asked a, an important question that I want to take a stab at trying to answer. He said, what kind of plan can we come up with? You know, uh, talking about reparations. Or, and reparations can come in a, a number of different forms. By the way, uh, somebody asked a question about the Indian. Uh, well, if you go out to the Hard Rock Casino, <laughs> you'll see one form of reparations. But anyway, that's... <laughs> but the point I wanted to make, what the federal government should do, needs to do, should have done a long time ago, is to set up and fund mentoring programs focused on elementary schools particularly in the inner city and where we have a large black population. Now, I know there are a lot of groups, my fraternity for one, we mentor young people over in West Camp at one of the elementary schools. But I'm talking about something on a national level where we can reach these kids in elementary schools. That's where they develop whether or not, you know, they're going to be hard workers and want to go to school and try to earn an honest living. They formulate those ideas in elementary school. We all know that. So that's what I think one thing is that we can do right now while they're debating whether or not to set up a commission to study reparations. Fund those mentoring programs. And I say fund, doesn't have to be a lot of money, but just enough money to pay for people's gas and you know, we'll put a little money in their pockets. Young people who want to, and particularly African American males, who can mentor our boys. That would solve a lot of the problems that you have with the young men standing around and you wonder what they're what they're doing with their lives. That's a good point. Uh, they, they kind of formulate those ideas early. And unfortunately, they have many more negative role models than they have positive role models. That's my two cents worth. Well, thank you, sir. We really, Excellent. We really, we really appreciate it. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in the future. But there is a city in Illinois that is currently paying black folks in that city reparations. So, you know, so for those who want to do some mm -hmm. some research on your own, so when we have this conversation in several mm -hmm. weeks, you know, it's not, it's, they don't have to be a federal reparation, you know, bill or statement. You know, there are some cities, there's a lot of ways you can do this. All right, Gable, go ahead, your two cents. All right, guys, we're going to try and lighten the load here a little bit and just try and... Uh, Bring some humor to the table, because Eddie came in pretty strong right off the bat. So uh, <coughs> we're going to go light here and uh, probably start out with the hipster who gets mad for his photo was being used on the Internet in an article about how all hipsters look alike. And then he found out it wasn't him. Somebody looked just like him. Uh, let's see, moving along, uh, Alabama man, 35 years old, is charged with illegally owning an attack squirrel he fed meth to and called the squirrel D's Nuts. <laughs> yeah, they're out there, folks. They're <coughs> pretty darn interesting. Uh, meanwhile, Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, says that the Biden administration is considering taxing drivers by the mile to fund infrastructure, and if you guys know when the government says infrastructure, that means nothing. Just wasting money. We'll never know where that money goes. It'll go off somewhere, they say. The Harley Davidson Fat Boy motorcycle is now being referred to as a generously proportioned gender-neutral two-wheeled vehicle. That way nobody's offended. We've got to stay neutral on that, you know. And if you want some great humor, Kamala Harris uh, is to host an event on empowering women with Bill Clinton to speak. I guess nobody's wearing a blue dress. Uh, despite his connections with the Epstein Associations and the accusations, up next after that, they're going to have Harvey Weinstein and Andrew Como to talk about combating sexual harassment in the workplace. You folks, you can't make this up. It really is just amazing to me. Uh, there are two methods of determining if meat is cooked properly. Use a handy meat thermometer. Or number two, eat it and wait an hour. Moving along. Uh, let's see, Bill Maher says uh, America is becoming segregated again. And he says the leftists are to blame. They're pushing it, and they're programming people to go for that idea. I thought people fought against that somewhere in the past. Meanwhile, fully vaccinated people are testing positive for COVID and HIV. Whoops. 
Uh, let's see here. Moving along, a lot of great new. Oh, how does this happen, folks, today? If we are so raci racist conscious, Lim Omari, Democrat running for Congress, sends a picture of a Ku Klux Klan hood to Candace Owens, a black woman, and it's okay. And that's funny. Why do white liberal Democrats get away with bringing up anything with a KKK to a black person and it's suddenly okay? Have we been programmed the wrong way? Something's going on. Uh, let's see here now. Oh, the vaccination thing. This is funny. I'm vaccinated, but unless you get yours, mine won't work. <laughs> now that is way stupid. And so many people have bought into that stupid thinking. It is mind boggling. Uh, let's see here. When to, uh, and here, here's a good thing to live by. When you start to start compromising yourself or your morals for the people around you, it's probably time to change the people around you because you know it's right. Majority of people were raised right. Eddie, let me toss it back to you because I've got so much uh, jokes on here. Oh, one of the local vet shops had free belly rubs. Sorry, that's only. All right. Thank you, thank you. All right, next caller, caller, let's see if we can get you in here on Force Talk Radio on this Saturday afternoon. Who are you, where are you calling from, and what say you? Hello? Hello, how are you? Yes. Hey, I was listening to the show today, and um, I've listened to the show quite frequently, um, driving thank around you. town, and, uh, you know, as a Caucasian, um, I do want to mention that, you know, you guys have my support on everything you're talking about, but there's so many things. This goes in it's such a an in-depth conversation to have this conversation right. about restitution, about right. race and, and equality. And the one thing that I I went through years ago <clears throat> was my employer. One time I went to hire a person. And I did it over the phone because they live out of the state. And my human resources department said I couldn't hire the person over the phone because I didn't see them. I haven't visually looked at them. And I thought how racist that was and how biased that was because it shouldn't matter yeah. what the person looks like, what they, if they're overweight, that they're a different color, if they're, you know, doesn't fit in our mindset of what we think that we want. That's the depth of racism. That's the depth of, of, bi of um, being, being biased against other things because we judge people for what we see. Right. Not for what we believe. And going through the, the last election, what I found is that there's racism out there that people don't even know they're racist because they didn't vote for a certain person because the vice president now is going to be a different color. And I think it's so, we're just so biased as a country that we want everybody to be equal. We want equality. We want everybody to be treated the same. But yet the, the, the depth of the despair goes so deep that people, some people don't even know that they are. And, and that's, and and that's so, the problem. The, 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 the problem is, and, and sorry, you know, we, we only had a couple of couple of minutes toward the end, is that everybody thinks they got a good idea of what equality uh, looks like. Yeah. And they don't know. Correct. They don't have a creeping, freaking idea of what equality looks like because it is something different to everybody. And while everybody is breaking, you know, their back and their neck and their nose, you know, trying to treat everybody equal, mm -hmm. you're not doing it. You're failing miserably at being advocates, advocates of, of equality. You, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, the black community, you know, folks have been saying we've been trying to treat you guys, you know, equal for, for 400 years and you haven't. I'm sorry, you're lying. You know, that's, that's just something you just keep saying. Uh, you're not trying to do equal, mm -hmm. and you can't do equal, and you're not going to be able to do it. So that's the conversation maybe we can have next week. So so welcome uh, to Porch Talk Radio.
Glad you could listen to us today. And until Live. we do this thing again, until we do this thing again next week, same bad time, same bad station, Tampa Bay. We here at Post Talk Radio. We love you. Bye bye. God bless America.